All right, what's up everyone? This is Don with Third Creative, and this is the walkthrough tutorial video for TGA3 multi-sport template. In this video, I will walk you through all of the steps and the processes and hopefully cover everything that you might need to know in order to customize this template yourself and get the most out of it. Um, it's going to be pretty thorough. I try to cover everything and anything, so no matter if you're master level Photoshop or you just have the basics down, hopefully I will cover anything that you might need to know that you came here for. Um, I do like to start with the 2x3 vertical. I guess before we jump in, um, one thing that I'm really liking about this template, um, I always try to include options, but um, this template uh, is one where the sample images you'll see feet and reflections and it's a very cool look um, it adds a lot to the image and so depending on the type of image or who you're creating it for the type of job it is um, that's obviously an option and it makes a very impactful image however I did not want to limit you to uh, showing feet only um, so there are options in here that we'll discuss or that we'll cover that will allow you to use this template and not show feet. Um, obviously that is a, a huge time saver. So you can see a few images that I have here where we're not seeing feet. So we'll talk about a little bit about that. Um, while we're on the subject of feet, just know that um, at the learning tab at thirdcreative.com or you can type in forward through thirdcreative.com forward slash learning um, and also at the third creative YouTube channel there is an older video uh, but a video that demonstrates how I create reflections I'll probably update that video sometime soon but the older one is there now and it can be very helpful um, if you need some help tackling those feet reflections Another cool thing about this uh, design is the option to create double images. So I think double images are really uh, a good option, especially for like uh, senior banners or just banners in general. Um, so you have options as you can see here. So we'll kind of talk about all of that. Let's jump into this thing. Um, I always like to start at the bottom. So uh, we've got background layers. If we open that up, you can see there's only three layers in here. Um, in fact, you can kind of click on these little eyeballs, turn the each layer folder off, and just kind of let you see what what everything is. Gives you a feel for where everything's at and what these folders um, contain. Obviously you can read all the descriptions, but I find that that helps. So let's look at these three layers here. We've got um, two options to control your background color. and I wanted to make it where you can have a different color at the top than the bottom. If you want the color to be the same, you can just select whatever color it is that you want. You can copy this code. Um, I hit Control or Command C. And then you can also paste, open the bottom one and paste it in. And hit OK and it's the same. But you also have the option to hold down Shift and just click on this layer mask. And so now, uh, this will cover up everything below it. So you can see, so two different, two different methods there to get the same color on the background. Or if you want different colors, you just pick the different colors, very easy. The last uh, layer in this folder is an upper background fog. So if I turn that off, you can see it's very subtle. Um, if you wanna change the color, click on color overlay. The reason that it is subtle is because I chose um, a variation of pink that is similar to the background but just a little bit lighter. I didn't want it to be drastic. If you want it more drastic you can move this more towards the left or the white and you'll see that it shows up a lot more. Just depends on what look you want and how bold you want it. Um, what I like to do is using this slider get in the general area of the background color. So we can say right there and then, or maybe a little bit more up and then start playing around with the very top, just moving around, seeing where you end up, what everything looks like. And of course you can keep playing with this till you get it just right. 
Um, let's back out of that. Of course it is optional. You can turn it off if you don't want that extra haze or fog. Let's turn that Let's get that back the way that it was. All right, let's look at these floor layers. Let's open this up. So let's go to the bottom. Um, I think by default, this is going to be turned off. I was playing with some things here, so I had it turned on. Um, this is the thin stripe floor glitter option. So referring to these thin stripes here, you have the option to have floor glitter. If you turn that on, you can see it. If you do use this option, you would control the color of these stripes on the glitter layer itself using this hue saturation slider. So if you double click it, open it up. Um, this can be a little intimidating for some, but it's really not that bad. Use this top slider to find the general color that you want and then use these next two sliders to fine tune it. More saturation, less saturation, lighter, darker and then if you need to tweak it up here just a little bit you can it doesn't take too long you can get the color you're looking for um, if you t choose not to use the glitter texture for these stripes here then the layer above it which is the actual um, or actually let me correct myself then it's the background layer that shows through down here. So if you don't use the glitter, the background, the very bottom background layer is where the color will show through. Um, now, the bigger stripes. I've got a folder here entitled Large Floor Stripes, and then I have the actual floor stripe, stripe layers inside that folder. There is a glitter texture that is clipped to this folder, so if we are using glitter, it's the same thing. This HSL window, if you double click on hue saturation, you fine tune your color here. If you are not using glitter, we'll turn this off, click the little eyeball. Now we would come to this large floor stripes layer inside the folder, click on color overlay, click on this swatch here, and pick our color. Um, there is an option for a stroke outline, so if you click next to that to turn it on, you can see it adds an extra little stripe in there. You can always fine tune that by double clicking on the word stroke itself. Click on this color box, pick the color that you want. You can also play with the size of it, increase it, decrease it. It's an option, or you can keep it like it is. Um, pretty simple. The last layer in this folder is the floor edge drop off shadow. So if I turn that off, you can see you lose some of that three dimensional look. Um, if you do want this to be darker or lighter, you can click on the, the levels icon here and play with these sliders, moving them left and right and getting them how you want them. More than likely, you can probably just leave that like it is. So let's look at the next folder here. We've got our vertical bars. So there's a little bit in here to, uh, to look at. Let's see, the vertical bars, uh, very first layer is another glitter texture. So just like on the floor, which actually I'm going to go back and turn that back on just so it looks right. Um, you have the option to have glitter. You can turn it off or you can use it. If you use it, this hue saturation, double click here, and you can fine tune your color. Um, if you don't use it, you have a couple options. Um, the next folder down is vertical bars. It actually has all the bar layers in there. You can get in there and move them around if you want to. Probably not something you would do more than likely, but you may want to change the color. So you have two options. You have color overlay. If you turn that on, it's just going to put a blanket solid color. And so we can go with this green here. Um, I think, oops, it didn't take. There we go. I think personally that the gradient overlay is a better way to go. So if you turn that color overlay off and turn on gradient overlay, you can double click the word gradient overlay, click this gradient window 
and you can control your colors. What this will do is uh, allow you to have a darker color towards the bottom of the bars and a lighter color towards the top. Now, I tried to set this up in a way where it's already good to go where all you have to do is click these two small color boxes and pick the color you want. So the one on the left is going to be a little bit darker. So you can pick that, click OK. The one on the right, if you click it, come down to the color box here. And you can go with something lighter. So it gives you that transition. So it's kind of like the effect of an above light coming down. So that's what I used on my sample images. It's a little extra as far as steps, but it's not too bad. So we'll cancel out of all of that, turn the uh, glitter back on. Actually, this is a good point. You notice I turn the glitter on, but it's not showing. It's only going to show if you don't have gradient overlay turned on and you don't have color turned on. These two will supersede this texture layer that is clipped to the folder. So keep that in mind if you get stuck on that. So let's see what else we have here. We've got glow behind bars change color. So this, if we turn it off, you see you lose that effect. Um, the color is very easily changed with the color overlay. You can double click. It is set to white. You can, you know, try to pick a color similar to your background. And you just kind of go from left to right at the very top, depending on how subtle you want it. The further to the right, the closer it becomes to the background color, and so the less prominent it will be. The further to the left, you know, it's going to provide more contrast and it will stand out more. So you can finesse it and find where you, where you think it looks just right. So we'll get out of that. Uh, next we have vertical light beams. I'll turn that off, turn that on. You can kind of see what, what those are. It's the same thing. It's a color overlay. And in this one I, did, I didn't go with white. I went with a little more of the pink shade. And so you can, of course, play with those. Just depends on how bold you want them. Let's cancel out of that. Next we have um, background bars. So the background bars are these darker bars in the, in the background. I added a Gaussian blur so it kind of creates a depth of field look where they're supposed to be in the far background in the distance and that's why they're darker. Um, but it's very simple. You just click on color overlay and you can see I did choose a darker shade. I didn't think the lighter shade really looked right. And there might be, that doesn't look too bad, but you have options there. Generally, if you use these, I try to keep it a little bit darker than whatever your background color is. Um, and then we have, at the very bottom, we have diagonal light beams. So we've got our light beams that kind of cast off in diagonal directions, and it's the same concept. Click on color overlay and pick a color, depending on how bright or prominent you want them or how subtle you want them just work along this top row here. Let's cancel out of that. So the thing to keep in mind is that these these layers here starting with the glow, so we've got four layers here. You may not want to have them all turned on. You may want them all turned off or, or certain ones turned on. You know, for example, this this double image, I, I turn them all off. If you have white, it's not really going to show up anyways. Same thing here. Um, I think with this um, this band one, yeah, I didn't use the, the diagonal uh, light beams. So just play around with it and find what looks best to you and, and what you're working with. But just keep in mind that you can, you don't have to use all of these. You can turn them off. Um, I guess one other thing I'll cover real quick is this layer mask that I have. There's a lot of layer masks in here and you can always adjust them. Um, this is a gradient mask, and so if you wanted to um, have these bars fade out differently, let's let's turn this off. So you can kind of see how it ma the mask applies to this. If you ever want to change it, click on your gradient tool. Make sure it's white to black. You can open this up and find it. But white reveals, black conceals. I like to click and drag down, and if you want to keep it straight, just hold down shift, it'll keep it straight. And with this new gradient tool, it's pretty cool. You can just put any anything you want in there and let go. 
but now with these anchor points you can just click and drag click drag and it's a lot easier to modify it but if you want a different look you can adjust that so pretty cool wanted to touch on that let's get it back how it was let's keep it moving next we have um, I guess we'll turn these layers back on we have our vignettes and spotlight effects so let's look at the very first one here we have a floor spotlight so if I turn it on and turn it off you can just see that it creates a highlight underneath the subject's feet so kind of as if there was a light shining on her we also have one in the upper which it's subtle but you can look behind the subject towards the top you can adjust these if you double click on the levels adjustment you can play with these sliders more than likely you won't want to but it is an option um, more importantly is the outer vignettes if I turn that off you can see it really darkens the outer edges there's two one is a levels which has a little more uh, effect on the color the saturation and then one or actually excuse me first one is uh, exposure and then the levels you can open them up and adjust them make them lighter make them darker but something that I have found that I like to do because you know let, let's say this one again for example it's all white it's bright I didn't want all that dark effect on it so you can select your move tool and select the mask and you can pull on these anchor points and pull it away from the edges you try to keep it symmetrical in fact you can hold down shift I believe and it'll keep it symmetrical but if you pull them away you only get the more feathered portion of it got a barking dog um, but keep that in mind because that's very handy it, it the built-in uh, vignetting may be too dark or maybe you want it darker go in there and adjust it play with it next we have our upper subject option so there's nothing in this folder but this is where you would insert a subject image that you would want to appear behind these text layers and so it it would be up here so for example what did we have was it this one so this image was dropped into that folder um, this is probably just as good a, a time as any to demonstrate this I have that subject here we can drop her in all right let's turn the top one off so now I'm gonna scale her up just a little bit so the way it's set up you might be able to play with it and make it work where you still have the floor but more than likely you would actually want to come down turn the floor layers off then you would want to select this middle text folder with your move tool click on an anchor point I like to hold down shift to keep it centered click anywhere inside this space and just drag down as far as you want to we'll say right in there hit the check mark commit it so now we can come back to our subject image click on the anchor point I'm just dragging out to scale her up move her around to position her how you want looks good so um, again this is a place where you may want to play with the upper or excuse me play with the layer mask so I'm gonna grab my gradient tool it's just a little bit abrupt so I'm gonna add a gradient mask and you can make it as subtle or as drastic as you want can fine-tune it if you bring it up too high the bars will start to show through your subject obviously you don't want that but you can adjust it so pretty cool um, and then of course if we back up well, backed up too far turn the floor back on I've got this subject of course you can always make a double image by scaling this subject down that might be a little bit drastic but just for the sake of seeing 
what it would look like. And that's how you would put your double images together. Um, let's see. Uh, let's get back. We'll go here. All right, so we covered the upper subject. Let's look at middle text and fog layers. Okay, so we'll just kind of work our way down. Uh, let's see, we've got our first layer is darken lower text. And so it's actually referring to this primary text that's here in the lower middle section. So you can turn it off, turn it on. You just see it kind of adds a gradient feel um, to the lower text over the glitter texture that you see in there. You can adjust this if you want to. If you open it up, play with this top slider, you can lighten or darken it, or you can turn it off altogether. Um, it is clipped to a subfolder that is entitled Primary Text Layers. And so um, it's referring to all of these text layers here. So if we look inside that subfolder, actually before we look inside that subfolder, let's look at this, um, this layer mask. It is not linked. And if I turn it off, you'll notice that it basically is what provides the appearance or the look that this text is kind of laying in a bed of uh, fog. So if you want to adjust it, you can, as we've already kind of demonstrated. You can use your, your gradient tool and just play around with that and get it however, however you want it. Um, inside that primary text subfolder, the very first layer is another subfolder entitled Text Twinkles. Um, you can change the color of these twinkles. It is set to white, which is probably what you would use most of the time. But if you wanted to make them more, you know, pink or not as not as bright, you can do that. Another thing you can do is open it up, and you have four. If you find that you want more, um, you can right click, and you can duplicate the layer and add as many as you as you need but if we turn this subject off and we zoom in a little bit you'll just notice I kind of have them in some of the corners of the letters so once you update your text you can come back to this and you can find little corners where they look good I always kind of like to do the two outside corners and then find you don't want to overdo it you don't want to underdo it you just kind of find some corners and some spots and then if you don't want to mess with any of that you can just turn this off right here um, so that's how the text twinkles work um, next we have our subtext subtext option one and we have subtext option two one is turned off two is turned on two is this curved text that you see over this right here um, if we turn on the first option it's just straight text at the top so you can use one or the other or you can use both I mean if you have enough information that you want you know to have in the image you can put them both on here um, they both have um, inner shadow and outer glow um, which you can turn on or turn off um, again going back to this I turned all of that off so there's some scenarios where it won't look right so just know that that's an option and then of course if you want to change the color of the outer glow you can although I have it set to white um, and if you want to change the color of either of these it's in your character window here on this little this little panel you can change the color uh, let's turn that back off so now we have a glitter texture uh, layer that is clipped to the primary text folder if you turn that off you can see you don't have to use the glitter. If you do use the glitter, again, same thing, hue saturation layer, open it up, fine tune it. If you turn it off, then you probably want to turn on this gradient overlay. And if you use the gradient overlay, you may not need the dark and lower text up here. You notice it just kind of adds a gradient effect, so you could turn that off or on. But if you open up the gradient window or the layer style window make sure you have gradient overlay click on this window and change your colors to get them how you want them it's pretty simple
just know that if you have that gradient turned on and the glitter turned on, the glitter is not going to show. You have to turn that glare, glitter overlay or gradient overlay off for the glitter to show. Somehow that extra text layer got in there. I'll delete that. I'm not sure what that's about. So uh, this brings us to our primary text. You'll notice there's two options here. First one turned on, second one turned off. The first one is entitled primary text pay option. The second one is entitled primary text free option. Um, you, it's on the product page. I have a big, at the very top, a big picture explaining this. Um, but then also in your PDF, you have links to access both of these fonts. The very first link is for Delirium. This is a font that I really liked. It's a font that I used for um, this gymnastics team to begin with, and um, I wanted to use it in this template. However, a commercial license does cost $25, and I understand that's something that maybe not everybody is going to want to do or to use. So I did include an alternate font that is similar, um, and this is called Passionate Relationship. Nice. Uh, but that is an option if you don't want to purchase the commercial license for Delirium. And then, of course, you always have the option to pick any other font that you want. These are just a couple that I chose that are similar, that work. Um, if you do purchase the commercial license for Delirium, I think it does have five or six different variations of the font. It's a pretty cool font, and you can use it on other projects, other images. So it might be uh, an investment. There they go again, no investment that's worth it. Um, but that's how that works. But let's look at the text. It has this curve or warp effect. So if you double click on your text layer that you're using and you come up here, you can turn that off um, by going into this drop down menu and choosing none. Or you can go back and what was it, arc upper? Um, if you leave it on, you can adjust it with this top slider, how, how drastic you want it. Hopefully they stop barking. Um, but that's how that works. Another thing that, uh, and this is going to apply uh, even more in your horizontals, but you can change the height. So if you come up here to your character panel, well, it looks like I've got it at 102. That's odd. Um, probably intended to be 100. But if you want this to come up higher, you can. In a scenario, you know, in the horizontal that I think of is if you have lower subjects and then you have subjects above and you don't want your lower subjects to cover up your your primary text too much, you might, once you go too far it starts to look weird, but you might make it taller to extend higher above your lower subjects. Um, that's something that I found myself doing in one of the sample images, so I wanted to make sure that I touched on that. Uh, let's keep it moving. Next we have our horizontal light streak. Turn that off. You can see what that does. There's a color overlay. You basically pick a color similar to this background color or the background fog and stay along the top here and decide how subtle or not subtle you want it to be. Um, next we have a fog layer. You can turn that off. It's very subtle. You can barely see it back here. And then this one is a little more prominent. You can see, but both of them are controlled with a color overlay. Um, the same concept. You pick the color that you want. It's going to be a little bit lighter than the color that you choose for this bottom layer folder here. So you turn that off and on. It's basically the uh, horizon fog layer. And the way I did this, I put a solid layer in here and I put it inside a folder and I put a gradient mask on the folder and a gradient mask on the layer inside the folder. So the layer inside the folder, the gradient mask is basically controls the top and the fade out that you get right here. And it's the opposite with this gradient mask. If you want to adjust that, once again, we're going to use our gradient tool. We're going to select the mask that we want. And we can see that this fades out towards the bottom because the black is on the bottom. So if you wanted to extend this or bring it up, or hold down shift, you can. Let's get out of that. If you want to do the opposite, which is more likely to raise it, it's actually already showing one, but we'll just do a new one. Click, drag, hold shift, and then you can just adjust it. 
however. So this comes in handy um, to cover, maybe cover up part of your subject that you would have behind here if you did no feet or if you did um, a double image. Um, so don't be afraid to jump in there and finesse that. Make your image look even better if the, uh, the way I have it set up right now doesn't look just right. Um, and that's it for the middle text and fog layers. Um, and again, you can you can move that up and down. You can s scale your text larger and smaller. Um, next, we have our lower subject, or excuse me, our lower text layers, which I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We'll look at it, keep it centered. So we've got our lower text, which is used for the subject name, but it could be anything that you want. It has an inner shadow, an outer glow, and a drop shadow. You can click on any of these to adjust them, but the primary color. Um, is just going to be in your character panel here in this box. So you can pick any color that you that you need. You can also turn off any of these. Once again, I'll go back to this. You know, it didn't work with this color scheme. So good example. Um, and then the same thing with the lower text, which in this case I used for the year, but it could say senior, junior, it could be whatever. Um, whatever you want it to be. And then of course we have our subject layer. And we have a layer mask on here. And basically what this layer mask does, it's on length. It makes sure that anything like these reflections doesn't extend past this drop off line. So if I turn that off, you'll see it extends beyond that. It doesn't quite look right. So that's just to help you there. Um, obviously this is where you drop your subjects in. You scale them around. So once you get them in here with your move tool, you can scale and position your images however you need to. And then this layer right here, um, this is a simple shadow layer. So this is just a very simple shadow. It's not like hyper realistic, but it adds a little more realism. You can select it and with your move tool, you can play with how tall or how wide it is. Um, you can also reduce opacity slightly if you want it to be a little less subtle. But basically, I just set that in there underneath the feet, and it just provides a little more realism. Um, so you can reuse that. So you would want to obviously delete the red layers here, and then you would reuse that shadow layer if you choose to. All right. I don't know, I just kind of flew through that, but hopefully I covered everything. Again, keep in mind these things apply to the other files. Normally I would demonstrate the, the memory mate, how you drop your team image in there, and I would demonstrate how the bleed guides work on the button, uh, but I think I'm just gonna make an independent videos for both of those because it's the same thing every time. So if you're watching this before I have those independent videos, don't worry, you can just go to the previous template video that I have, which I believe is for matchup. Just go all the way to the end. You'll see how that works. It's the same thing here. Really, there's only one other thing that I want to touch on, which is just basically some options with the horizontal when you're making your team. So let's jump over to the 2 by 3 horizontal real quick, and we'll wrap this thing up. All right, so now we've got our two by three horizontal pulled up. Um, really, I just want to kind of show you some options that you have as far as um, your subject placement and different ways you can go about it. Obviously, you can use it as it's set up where you're going to show the floor, you're going to show feet and reflections. You have the option to not, which I know I have this one right here because she overlaps the text, but if you use your imagination, we can have all of these subjects um, kind of in the front and then you depending on what your text is you could you know make the text even bigger and you can bring it up higher so that everything just kind of sits all, everything as far as subject sits in front I have some sample images that are like that and so if we go back to the beginning here. Oh, first things first. There we go. 
All right, so another option that you have is to not show feet. And when you do that, you want to turn the floor off, obviously. And so I have a group image here that I'm gonna, let me just go ahead and drop that, well, gosh, we'll find it. All right, let's drop it in. It's gonna take a minute because it's not a flattened image. It's got a bunch of reflection layers and different things. Now that it's in there, let's place it. Let's place it in this one so we can kind of demonstrate how to put subject images behind the text. So I've got them in there, and I just need to position them a little better. We'll get them centered. Okay, so now we have them in there. So next, we need to work on this middle text and fog layer. So we'll select the middle text, click on an anchor point, I hold down shift to keep it kind of centered, and we're just going to bring it down however far that we want to. Probably not too far. Okay, and so now that works pretty well, but you got some options depending on how much leg you want to show. I've got this um, subject, I've got this um, layer mask here, but then we also have the fog actually is covering up so this is kind of where I was talking about how you could adjust that fog by opening the middle text and fog layers going all the way to the bottom and we would select this one here that's inside the subfolder because that's what's affecting the fog that goes over their legs and so this is where you could make that a little more subtle obviously we don't want the feet to show so we'll pull it up and you can control how much of it covers up your images. So that's an, that's an option there. The other option that I wanted to touch on, let's see, let's close this, is if we wanted our subjects to be in front of the text, we would bring them up here to this top subject folder. Okay, and let's position them a little further down might even make them a little bigger so obviously their feet show now but that's okay we'll change that let everything get situated so the next thing we will want to do is go to the middle text click on an anchor point I hold down shift and we want to drag this up and this may be one where we want to scale it a little larger just depends but I'm going to in this case real quick okay I'm going to do this really quickly, so it may not be the way I would have the final image, but it's just so that you can get the idea. So now we'll come back up here. We've got our images in here, and we have this layer mask. This layer mask is just cutting off where the floor shadow was, so we would want to adjust that using um, a gradient mask. So with the layer mask selected, go to the gradient tool. Again, we have white to black. So we want to click where we want opacity to start fading and drag down and then you can let go and with this new gradient tool you can just play with it something along that lines um, but you get the idea that's another option I just turned the vignette off just to see what that would look like you can adjust those so again you've got options you can do feet you can not do feet you can do the bottom row show feet top row not show feet just all kinds of options and i know that i kind of just blew through all of that and hopefully i just covered everything but if for any reason there's anything i didn't cover or if you still have questions always feel free to reach out to me you can shoot me an email uh, Don at thirdcreative.com but I think that's it for this one uh, TGA3 uh, I hope it serves you well and as always I hope it makes you some cash and uh, it's on to the next one so until next time we'll see you